But now, let's turn your attention to those. Cracks are beginning to show in at least one of the structures at the forefront of government's response to the coronavirus. Member of the Ministerial Advisory Committee, that's Professor Glenda Gray, has spoken out against the lockdown regulations, saying that they are not based on science and, in fact, should be scrapped. She says the advisory committee was not consulted on the regulations or the lowering of levels. Professor Gray joins us now via Skype line for more insight on this. Prof, thanks very much for your time. Welcome to the AM report. Uh, we've kind of seen this um, emerge from yesterday with some reports suggesting that members of the MAC feel the risk adjuster strategy is a catastrophe. Do you agree with that sentiment? I think the lockdown was important and imperative to slow down the virus transmission and to get the country ready for the medical part of the epidemic. And so it's critical for that to have happened. Um, the way we move out of the lockdown um, should be science-based and should be based on, on ways of preventing transmission uh, rather than any other measures. And so um, my, my, suggestion, uh, my, my suggestions around the regulations is that, uh, I'm, I'm not too sure if I'm on. Um, can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear, Prof. Go oh, ahead. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, and so, so my, my, my suggestions around the regulations is that they be, should be science-based and, and based on minimizing transmission, onward transmission of the respiratory virus. And, um, and, that, and that's my, the, my, my take on the regulations that were, were, were issued were, were that they weren't, they weren't supporting the, the, prohibi the, the transmission, onward transmission of the COVID virus. And so I made examples such as um, uh, what, what clothes you could buy, because there's no evidence that clothes can spread COVID-19. What we do know what spreads COVID-19 is, is, um, is uh, transmission uh, from person to person and from surfaces. And so what we do need to do is we need to implement non-pharmaceutical interventions, which are social distancing, uh, wearing uh, face masks, or, or, or covering your, your face, washing your hands or sanitizing your hands and making sure that surfaces um, are, are, are clean. You also need to make sure that you, you minimize contact uh, with people for too long. And so that is why it's imperative that if you are in a, a taxi that you are wearing a mask and that you make sure that your hands are clean and you don't touch um, any surfaces. So my advice around um, easing the lockdown is to, to rapidly implement uh, what we call non-pharmaceutical interventions. Yeah, but the sound of it, though, it, it appears that those were being implemented alongside the lockdown. We'll speak about that in just a moment. Uh, let me take a few steps back, if I can, though. I mean, what level of consultation, if any, took place leading up to the implementation of the lockdown and, in fact, to the extension of the stringent measure? Well, I think you have heard from others from the, the MAC is that there was, there, was, there, there, was, there was minimal engagement around... Uh, the strategy for uh, minimize, for the lock for uh, re, re, um, for easing the lockdown, and so uh, I concur with the rest of my 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 um, members of uh, who've already responded to the to the in the Sunday Times. Right, and you know what it does certainly suggest is that you know there are particular interests that are being safeguarded as um, the lockdown continues in its current form, especially if the MAC is not being consulted itself. Do you have an idea of whose interests might be prioritized if it's not the public interest at this stage? We have a virus and an epidemic to fight, and we should not be fighting each other. The epidemic is going to be with us for a long time until we find a vaccine or an antiviral. And so instead of, instead of getting into squabbles, we should keep an eye on the ball. We should, we should say, you know, let us work together and stop this transmission. Let's make sure that the people in the country um, are, as protected as much as, are protected as much as possible and let's get our hospitals ready and our healthcare workers protected uh, for the epidemic. And so I think it's, it's um, futile to go down a path of uh, this one, that one. You know, what we have to do is keep our eye on, on the ball. There is an epidemic that is going to unfold and we need to be prepared for it and we need to help our citizens uh, prepare for it and we need to make sure that we protect our citizens in, in the most able way. Um, we know that the elderly and the vulnerable are most affected by, by COVID-19 and that is what we have to do. We have to protect our elderly and we have to look at who gets infected. A lot of the infections are asymptomatic and so we should let the people out who are going to be least um, impacted by the epidemic and make sure that we all implement uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions 
We know we don't have any and we don't have any vaccine at the moment, and so the only tool we have um, is around trying to minimise spread from person to person by using these these practices. Right. Whilst I understand the position you're taking on this, I mean, it's important that, you know, the government and its advisory committee appear to be singing from the same hymn book. But like I said already, the cracks are beginning to show. But let me, let me pose it this way. I mean, should South Africans be concerned about what is informing the decisions that are ostensibly presented as trying to flatten the curve? I mean, should we be worried, for instance, that you as a member of the MAC disagree with what's actually happening in the country? I think what the public needs to know is that this virus is going to be around for a long time and that it may last until um, for another 18 months and that we're going to continue to seep uh, infections and we're going to continue to see cases. And our job um, as, as the country is to make sure that uh, we can try and minimize the onward transmission of the virus so that our hospitals are ready to, to, to manage those who, who need to be managed. And so that's our job. Our job is to slow transmission and make sure our hospitals are ready uh, for the infections that are about to occur. And everything else is um, irrelevant. It's our ability to respond to the epidemic that's important uh, in the face of no vaccine and no antiviral. All right. Uh, and one of those ways you're suggesting is through those non-pharmaceutical interventions, as you've mentioned. They sound very familiar. I mean, washing hands, wearing masks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Take us through the thinking here. I mean, how are these essentially more effective in flattening the curve than a lockdown? Unless that's not what you say. So these are part. So as you move out of a lockdown, or as you, as we know, as we as we go out into our everyday business. We, we, we optimize our ability to prevent getting the, the virus by doing certain practices. We know that for over 100 years, washing your hands reduces transmission to children with respiratory illnesses and gastrointestinal illnesses. One third of all gastrointestinal um, uh, infections to, to children can be, re, can be eliminated by washing your hands. So, so high, washing your hands is a very important uh, barrier, I mean a very important method to prevent the onward transmission of respiratory illnesses. So we know that also wearing a mask is important because it also uh, prevents you from spreading it and, and hope, hopefully for you from acquiring it. We know that the, the more contact you have with people, so in crowds and in congestion, makes you more at risk. And so what we have to do is try and minimize congestion, increase the social distancing, change our practices around how we, how we greet people and how we, and how we um, have a cough etiquette. It's popping into your into your elbow and um, and and basically staying as far away as people as possible to prevent um, onward prevent congestion manage the manage spaces in malls manage manage queues and um, and protect people by giving them the right information about non pharmaceutical interventions. All right, thanks very much for getting us into the picture and giving us your take. Certainly appreciate your time. Uh, Professor Glenda Gray is a member of the Ministerial Advisory Committee. She's also the chair of the South African Medical Research Council. Prof, thanks very much for your time in.